Hello girls and boys, what do you reckon the topic of this video is going to be? G'day everyone, today we are looking at Makita's range of 40 volt XGT drills. Let's see if I can remember all the numbers here. On the left we have the DF002G, the HP002G, the DF001G and the HP001G. Woo, got it first shot. And the numbers in the states, this is going to be much trickier to do. The GFD02G, the GPH02D. The GFD01D and the GPH01D. I think I got them right. Eight shots. <laughs> I wish everybody had the same model number. In the background you may also be able to see some 18 volt tools. We're just going to go through all the numbers in this video. Going to have a look at what the difference is power wise with all these different numbers and all these different drills. In case you're a little confused. In case you're new to battery drills, in case you're new to these two systems and you want to know why you'd want to get the 40 volt over the 18 volt, that sort of thing, that's what we're going to cover in this video. So to date, these are the four 40 volt max drills that Makita have released in most of the world. The first two were these two, so these are the top of the line. Then after that, they released the sort of entry level drills, I guess you would call them. They're still really good drills, but they're not quite as powerful as these two. So what is the difference then, you are saying, between these two and these two that are now in the back? Looking at these two, you might think, hey, they look like the exact same drill. Well, they're not. This one is what you might call a drill driver, and this is what you might call a hammer drill, or a combi drill, depending on where you live. So this one just drills and drives screws. This one drills, drives screws, and also has a hammer function for drilling into masonry. These two in the back here do exactly the same. One is a drill driver, one is a hammer drill. But these two are not as powerful as the other two. You can see they're a little bit smaller, and the other differences they have are they're not as high quality in their build components. These are plastic chucks, whereas these two have metal chucks. These are going to take a lot more abuse, these two tools, than these two. If you do a lot of drilling in tight places and stuff, a metal chuck is so much better because they end up rubbing against things, grinding against stuff. You do that with one of these plastic ones, they get all chewed up and then they're really uncomfortable on your hand when you're trying to change bits, that sort of thing. Yeah, you can destroy these quite easily if you're not careful. Whereas these ones, you don't have to worry about it so much, you can just run them up against things and the chucks are going to last because they're made of steel. So why would you buy these two more expensive ones over these two? Other than the chuck. They are slower drills. The hammer drill is not going to impact as hard as these ones will. They don't have the torque that these ones do. And these two, if you have a look closely down here, have a special feature that these two in the back do not. Personally, I think if you're buying the 40 volt stuff, then you're going to want good grunty stuff and you'd go for these. I'm, I was kind of surprised when Makita released these. But they are trying to make a 40 volt system that encompasses every aspect of tools, just like the 18 volt one. So there'll be low end, entry level stuff, and high end, powerful stuff as well in every sort of tool. There's 38 angle grinders. Can you believe that? And about, I don't know, half a dozen or so rotary hammer drills. 
and there's at least eight circular saws. So Makita like numbers. Only one impact driver so far, though. I mean, what the hell? I mean, impact drivers and Makita go hand in hand. You know, they whack out so many impact drivers on the 18 volt system. But so far, we've only got the one on the 40 volt system. Let's take a look at just the drivers first. The RPM of the entry level drill is 2200. The RPM of the high end is 2600. This one has a max fastening torque of 65 newton meters, whereas this one is 141. This one weighs 1 1.3 kgs without a battery. This one weighs 1 1.6. They both have a two speed gearbox. When it comes to the clutch setting for putting in screws, this one has 21 settings. Multiply that by the two different gears and you have 42 settings in total. This one has 41 gears just on gearbox one. You stick it in speed two, you get another 21 settings. Total of 62 settings available on that one. This high end model comes with a side handle. This one does not. The torque is much lower. You're far less likely to do damage to your wrist with this one as you are with this one. The entry model is rated at drilling into 13 mil steel and 38 millimeters wood. The high end model is rated at 20 in steel and 50 in wood. Now those are drill bit numbers. But when you come to something like a hole saw, this is rated at 150 millimeters, whereas this one's only 50. Now if you compare some of these numbers to the new 18 volt top of the line one, the 18 volt one is rated with the same torque as this, which seems surprising, but with an RPM of 2100, whereas this one, 2600, and even the entry level is 2200. This 18 volt one and this 18 volt one are both only 1500. When we take a look at the two hammer drills, the numbers are pretty much the same for most of it, except of course this has the extra added feature of having a hammer. So the numbers 2200 maximum RPM and 2600 maximum RPM, 65 Newton meters max torque, 141 Newton meters max torque. And then when we come to the impacts for the concrete, 9,000 impacts on the lower speed, 9,750 on the lower speed, 33,000 on the higher speed, and 39,000 on the higher speed. This is rated at 13 mil for hammer, and this is rated at 20 mil. Yeah. Okay, I would not want to be using a 20 millimeter drill bit trying to get into masonry or concrete with one of these. I would far rather use a rotary hammer drill. I tend to only use these hammer drills or combi drills if you're in the UK for five millimeter stuff and stuff like that. Five, six mil, anything above that, I jump up to a rotary hammer drill because I don't want to be there all day and I don't want my poor elbow to be shaken to bits. If we take a look at a couple of older 18 volt Makita hammer drills, this was the top of the line brushed version. This was up until just recently the top of the line brushless version. This one has a top RPM of 2100. This one has a top RPM of 2000. This is the top of the line brushed model. Remember when they used to have brushes and tools? This one has a maximum impact rate of 30,000. This one has a maximum impact rate of 31,500. So even the lowest model in the 40 volt range is better than those two. Not when it comes to torque though. The torque on this one is 121, I do believe. Whereas if you do remember, this one's only 65. If you don't drill into concrete or masonry very often though, or you're only drilling into soft things like bricks and stuff, then that will be fine for you. Let's go into a bit more depth now on the clutch settings. The clutch settings on the high end one is down here near your battery. Whereas this one, completely clear here, you do it all at the top on the ring like they have been for donkey's years. So this one, you have these 21 numbers on the dial here. You, you set your drill onto the screw mode, set the dial, and away you go. When this one then gets too much torque, it sounds like a sick impact driver. Whereas this one here, stopped completely. This one, when you want to set it, you put your selector onto screw. You then pull the trigger. Unfortunately, they didn't make this next bit easy for people who make YouTube videos, but let's see if we can do this. Hopefully you can see down here on the clutch settings, we are reading 41. If I now change this to speed two, you can see it's dropped to setting one. If I then push the button here next to the numbers, we get a green flashing light saying it is unlocked. You can now dial through your numbers there. So we'll put it up to say nine there. And then we'll stick it back on speed one and it's 41. So it keeps the program for either speed, unlike 
the more manual version which you'll have to change in between gives you one sort of more option let's say for instance you're a roofer and a plasterboard fitter so you can have one set for your roofing and you flick it over on the other one to whack in screws quickly for when you're chucking up jib board, plasterboard, drywall, whatever you call it where you come from. And these settings are really cool because as I said just before, the screw will just stop. It doesn't go da 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 da. So once you know the setting, once you've got it dialed in, you can just pull the trigger, it'll go into the perfect point you want and then just stop, take your finger off the trigger. Very cool. It almost eliminates the need for an impact driver once you get the hang of it. I'll now show you what I mean. First up the HP 002G, screw setting, clutch setting 1. HP 001G, screw mode, clutch setting 1. Look at that, just stop dead. None of that annoying noise. And as you can see you can keep tweaking it and get that extra bit of power so you can actually still get stuff in if you need to. Unlike this one which will not do it without you changing the clutch up a bit. I much prefer the high end one for that. 100mm batten screw, highest clutch setting, let's go. Same again with the high end model this time, we've got it on the screw setting, 41 down here on the clutch. As you can see, much more power. This one, can't even do it. If you need power, you've got to go with this one. You can of course just drive screws in on the drill setting, so that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to stick them on speed 2 on the drill setting and we're going to drive some 150mm stainless 14 gauge batten screws. This is just to show you how much power this one has over this one. This is still a very powerful drill and personally I think it still needs a side handle when you're doing tasks like this because when you come to that sudden stop at the end if you haven't got your finger in the right place on the trigger you can do yourself an injury to the wrist. Having a big side handle like this helps stop that sort of thing from happening. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Change to gear one. So as you saw this one has a lot more grunt than this one but this is still a very powerful little drill. So if you want something that's a bit more compact in weight, not in girth though, if you look at the front here this one's quite fat. This one has to be a lot thinner to get the handle on. Lengthwise they are about the same. This one perhaps slightly shorter for the entry level model. So that's just a quick overview of the new 40 volt drills from Makita. If you want to see more on these Take a look at my other channel down there and up there. I'll do some two screw reviews with some of these. And if you want to see a full review of the top one here versus the 18 volt tools, once again, up there, down there. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you may be slightly clearer on the differences between these tools and which one might be best suited for you. If you're on the Makita 40 volt platform, please consider subscribing. I do tons of reviews, probably more than anybody else on YouTube, to be honest, when it comes to 40 volt Makita stuff. So please consider hitting that subscribe button, clicking that little bell next to it, hitting the like button, all that stuff all helps me make more videos. And let me know what other 40 volt stuff you want to see reviewed. There's over 50 tools out now and there's a lot more coming. So let me know down in the comments what you want to see. And I'll go start filming another one of those right now. If you want to know prices of these things, I'll try to find some links and I'll put them in the description below to New Zealand, say Handy Hardware and maybe Australia and Amazon in the UK, Amazon in America, that sort of thing. I'll put them down there. So take a look at those if you want to check any of the info from this video or you want to see how much these things are going to set you back. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you have a good day out there and I'll see you on another one soon. Cheers.
And no, I don't own this many drills. Half of these are mine and half of these came from 